we get caught so much in in trying to develop strategies or we, we get addicted to the likes and the feedback and I, I think that would be my advice to, to any artists or, or any sort of business is to just to keep creating content I mean feedbacks important yeah but but we're not you don't get distracted by that I've spoken to a couple of my guests it's like projecting just hollering into the void mm -hmm. just projecting into space and the, and the moment you're doing that you, you just come up with amazing content Welcome to episode 127 of Be The Drop, a weekly interview podcast sharing stories from people who inspire and motivate others to help teach you how to tell your story. I'm Amelia Veal, Director at Narrative Marketing and firm believer in the superpower of storytelling. Waking up from a three-week coma puts life into a different perspective. When the fragile nature of life becomes obvious, we are motivated to make major changes in our life. Why should we waste time doing things that make us unhappy and don't provide us with personal growth? Rowan Harry is a comedian and podcaster who had such an experience. After working in IT and begrudgingly working the grind, he found himself waking up after a three week coma, paralyzed from the waist down. Given the new challenges of trying to walk again, Rowan found new perspective on goal setting and his life aspirations. In today's episode of Be The Drop, Rowan discusses a period of his life never publicly discussed before, giving us insights into methods used to overcome challenges of the body and mind. Rowan and I also talk about the power of storytelling and how starting a podcast was the best way Rowan could share his story whilst developing his comedic and interpersonal skills. This is Rowan's version of Be The Drop. Would you like to join me on a creative podcasting journey? Then come along to my first ever Adelaide Fringe show called Pop Your Podcast Cherry, an interactive podcasting event on Tuesday 19th or 26th of February at The Jade. Part of the Bank SA Support Act, tickets are normally $20, but thanks to Bank SA, there are some available for only $10 each. Book your tickets via the Fringe website linked in the show notes. I would love to see you there. Thank you so much, Rowan, for joining me on our next episode of Be The Drop. No, no worries. Thanks. Thank you, Amelia. It's, a, it's an absolute honour. Oh, be part of your podcast. Good. Well, I know you've got your item of significance. That's going to kick us off so we can learn a little bit of backstory about you. Before we jump in and, you know, hear more of your story, let's, can you tell us about your item of significance and what that means to you and your journey and the audience you've built? Sure. I brought in a Reebok pump. So this item represents walking for a second time or walking out of my wheelchair. And it's also got that nostalgic part of it as well. I did have Reebok pumps when I was a kid. And you have tantalised us there with a pretty important story of yours. So how about you share a little bit more? Do you feel comfortable sharing the rest of that story? Walking for the second time and wheelchair, what happened there, Rowan? Absolutely. It would have been about five years ago. I was working in an IT office job and I was just miserable. I hated my life. And I would just do the office grind nine to five, live for Friday, and this one time, just out of the blue, I just woke up in a hospital bed, found out I'd been in a coma for two to three weeks, and I was paralyzed from the waist down. And it was, it was confronting, it was scary. I didn't know what was real or wasn't. It just felt like it was this dream. But you know that moment where you, you wake up and you, you've got a dead arm or something, and then after about 30 seconds, it comes back. I kind of thought that was happening, but after about two or three days, I just spent the whole day just staring at my paralyzed body. The only thing I could feel was my, my right hand. Right. So, and literally you woke up like this? Yeah. Yeah. Literally woke up like that. And, um, my partner, Nikki just, just says, well, we, this is serious. You nearly died. And I can't remember most of it. It was just sort of like being stuck in in this space mm. and waking up and just can't remember what yeah can't remember where i was what was real what was not 
Mm. And it was just took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that I may never walk again. Mm, so then what happened? Because obviously you did walk in here, yeah, which is yeah, great. Right. I'm very pleased about that. Um, yeah. So what happened then? Like what was that journey? You know, you had to learn to walk again. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was literally stuck in my head, like the, used the power of my mind. To, I was just staring at my toes for about two to three days. And it was like that scene from Kill Bill, you know, when she's just like wiggle that toe. Mm. So I kind of did that and then I did have that moment where I connected my brain to my toe and I did get that little wiggle and then and at that point I knew it was going to take so much effort and so, so much hard work and dedication but that's when it's like wow I, I have a goal now and my goal was to walk out of the hospital. Mm. And it's interesting, you know, it puts into perspective, we, you know, just started a new year, 2019, yeah. people are setting goals. Uh, you know, I think for you, does, is that whole goal setting really shifted the paradigm of, of what, what does it mean to set goals and where, you know, has that really changed your mindset? Yeah, I mean, for me, the best way to achieve a goal is to have a, a real strong reason of wanting it. Like, it's easy to have these New Year's resolutions, but it's like, okay, okay what, what are you going to do about it and what are you going to get out of it? And to me, I had such an emotional connection of walking out. That was strong enough for me, and I was able to kind of break it down. And, and it does sound really weird, but just to celebrate the small victories along the way, goals that don't work, don't work for various reasons, but... Primarily for me, that was one of them. Like I was celebrating, wow, I didn't soil my pants today. Like, hooray, you know, and I would, I would celebrate that. Well, it's worth celebrating. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, and I think that's a really interesting journey you've gone through. And I, I really like that concept of celebrating the small milestones yeah. along the bigger, you know, journey of reaching goals, because I do think we do get caught up. And for you now, you've you've come about and you've 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 created an, an, another personality as well as part of your journey out of learning to walk and, and resh reshifting yourself into who you are now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, you know, so you've used stand up comedy along your way as, as part of this journey. Co love comedy saved my life. Yeah. In at that moment, I'm just trying to, to recall it and go back to that moment right now because I haven't really talked about this, but I do remember the earlier points of just total paralysis as, as a means of survival. I imagine that I was an actor preparing for a role and, and it was temporary. Like I, like knowing that I am going to walk. And, and I guess for me, I, I changed the narrative. Mm. It's like, no, I'm not going to make this my identity. This isn't who I am. And at that stage, I couldn't even string a sentence together. Mm. Like I had all this, I think they call it word salad, where you, you want to say, you want to talk about lettuce and you're thinking tomato or something like that. Mm. So I, I was making absolutely no sense. I had to completely retrain all of my faculties and start from square one mm. but then as i was going along that journey it was like getting back on the bike it's like i know how to do this and just trying to like keeping my i was keeping my eyes on the big picture the whole way but knowing that i wasn't going to get there in one step and it wasn't a matter of just you know getting up and going hey it's amazing i've been healed i can walk again mm. which i mean i that, that could exist, that, that type of healing. But for me, I had to work for it. Mm. I, I think, yeah, we get, we get too focused on the big picture and we get frustrated that we forget that the, the small steps that you're going to get there and it's not like we don't just get handed it. Mm. We have to work for it. And that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. Yeah. And you are on fire when you've got that momentum. Like once, mm. once you do, you start with your, your small achievements and then, and then you build up. But once you plateau... For me, walking out of um, Hampstead Rehab, I mean, I had a goal that I wanted to do it before Christmas, and, and I did. I walked out two days before Christmas, which was amazing. Well done. Like, I was so on, like, yeah. I was so close. Yeah. But for a lot of people, they didn't, they had to wheel themselves out of there, and I had a lot of guilt. Mm. I don't know why. Like, it was yeah. just a weird emotion to have to, to actually feel guilty for achieving that goal mm. of walking mm. Where, when others couldn't when others couldn't not that it was you know not, not like yeah. that was anything to do in, in your control or power but it, it is yep. interesting guilt is an interesting thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah.
but, but I, I kind of, like, like you were saying, using that character, which is um, the Attitude Consultant. AttitudeConsultant.com. Which is my podcast now. It, it started off as just art therapy. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, I, I'm breaking everything down to attitude. And it was in the midst of this Miley Cyrus addiction as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it started. Mm-hmm. Like I was tr- trying to kind of fill the blanks because a lot of it, was it was confusing it's like why am i here why did this happen to me and and i was angry about it like i I was really angry i had nothing to blame i just woke up all of a sudden it's like my life has changed and my life kind of became split at that point it was that traumatic yeah moment where it's like a lot of people talk about creating a better version of yourself Mm. and i thought it'd be funny to have a character that was so overconfident and so arrogant and so disconnected from me as a as a as a mentor like creating my own mentor Mm. and for the attitude consultant it's about well the best version of myself is myself (laughs) (laughs) and it's it there's definitely an element of piss take right oh that's it started with piss take it was just me i guess gestalt therapy Mm. i think gestalt is um that, that armchair therapy but it was just me projectiling comedy and bogus weirdness into space. Mm-hmm. And now recently it's become more just storytelling. Like I just interview people and I listen to them. Yeah. And I, I'm really liking the evolution process of it. It's becoming more serious. And it does take you to places, the unexpected. So when you've got an agenda, you, you're trying to kind of fit it into that space and it doesn't always fit sometimes it's like putting a square peg in a round hole but when you can just sit back listen and just revel in the storytelling and just record the journey you don't even have to write it anymore it just writes itself yeah absolutely so podcasting a shared passion um why podcasting for you well i just kind of fell into it um I mean, a, a mutual friend of us, Liam, that that runs the Ozcast Network, we, we just sort of had a coffee and a chat and he just said, um, we noticed when I was doing the Miley Cyrus character and I'd done a couple of guest spots on the bad cast and he just sort of said, why don't, why don't you make your own podcast? And he, he, he kind of just pitched it to me and I said, all right, well, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have content for you next week. So I gave myself... A goal, like I said. <laughs> well done. Yeah, yeah. And and I did the first episode, I think I gave it to him within the next week. And as I was doing it, as I was just projecting my frustrations and my anger, I sort of said, well, where am I going with this? And I wasn't reverse engineering anything. I was just, just letting go. I, I just let go. And kind of just tell your story became my mantra from that point. Mm. Is that's all I'm doing. Yeah. And allowing others to tell their and stories. That, well, that came later. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, but, and, why, and why did that come as the next part of the evolution? How did that come about, really? I guess I just got bored of, t- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of making it all about me. Yeah. I, so I spoke to an old mate of mine um, that I went to art school with. And I was just exploring the technology of ha- having to record phone conversations and I, I think it was a skype interview or something like that so i rang him just to say i'm testing the microphone and in that moment i ended up just cold canvassing an interview out of him and the whole podcast was me just ringing my mate telling him i'm not good at interviews <laughs> Well, you practice practice is one of the best things you can do. So yeah. certainly for me, this journey has been about practicing interviewing techniques and learning as we go. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of and a lot of people thought I was being experimental, but I was just trying to get my head around the technology. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so it's definitely an evolution for you, and you know that's very much been fueled by a massive life. You know, as you say, a life split. Yeah, experience. Yeah, that's right. And I'm just trying to put the pieces back together, and I'm finding that my podcast is helping me do that. Mm. Like I said about changing the narrative in a hospital bed, I'm now kind of changing the narrative using my laptop computer Mm. so I can edit out any awkward conversations that I have. Like, How good would that be if you could do that in everyday life? (laughs) 
I know. I sometimes I sometimes wish I could be like Pac-Man, you know, and I say <laughs> something and it's out there and I just wish I could go chomp, 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 chomp. Yeah. And just chomp it back in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, people are, are searching for authenticity at the moment. Like we're wanting, every, everything's about getting on Instagram and putting all these nice filters. Like people want to see the rawness and the ugliness. And, and I think some brands are trying to do that. Mm. Not, not all successful. No. But uh, it, it's kind of fun to do that with my podcast too. Is some of my episodes is just 30 minutes of doing sound check. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just publish that. <laughs> So you've got, um, well, Adelaide Fringe is coming up and you're performing in the Adelaide Podcast Festival. That's right, yeah. So how are you feeling about that? You're looking forward to it? What what sort of things can people expect? Or is Rowan always the unexpected? It's a, Well, that's it. I don't even know what to expect, which is exciting. <laughs> I, I did it last year and I never published it because it was an absolute disaster. Oh. Like, you know, you've got an idea in your head of how something's going to be and then the reality of it is complete different it was kind of like that so i was i was a bit ashamed about it yeah about my performance so i didn't publish it so this year i'm i'm just gonna uh, market it as my first live podcast of the attitude consultant yeah i think it's great though that you go yeah. did it last year t- sucked <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. but i'm gonna get up i'm gonna do it again failure is not fun no i mean it is but incredibly valuable as you're saying yeah and the and the audience don't want you to fail they because they feel it too and then yeah. and then when when an audience member is wincing at the front and especially smaller crowds they're all staring back at you they want you to succeed yeah and you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta feel that you gotta know that yeah yeah you know for you along this journey obviously you have experienced some massive challenges. I mean, you yeah. had that life life spinning experience. What are some of those challenges and how did you overcome them? Okay. I mean, the biggest challenge was just having to be forced to be patient. Like just sitting still and being stuck in your own head. Mm. But I was able just to just to really reflect and to really think. Sometimes just sitting outside by the duck pond just observing nature and and just pausing for a moment mm. was was fantastic I, I kind of miss some of those moments where we just get caught up in in everyday life and just trying to fill everything and, and be as busy as we can mm, mm. thank you so much ron i have loved chatting with you in conclusion do you have a be the drop tip i kind of wrote more content in one week than I than I had done in the last five years, mm-hmm. well, and then the, the the five years prior to to, to the incident, and I, I think that would be my advice to, to any artists or or any sort of business is to just to keep creating content. I, I've spoken to a couple of my guests. It's like projecting, just hollering into the void, mm-hmm. just projecting into space. And the moment you're doing that, you're not you're not worried about. Oh, I mean, feedback's important. Yeah, but. But we're not. You don't get distracted by that, and the and the moment you're doing that, you, you just come up with amazing content. Mm. And, and and as you're saying before, you you fail, you get back up, and then and then that failure becomes your best stuff. Mm. All right, that's cool. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for giving me the opportunity to chat to you. Where can listeners find you if they'd like to hear more? Go hey, check out attitudeconsultant.com. That's, uh, I guess it's like a landing page of all my content. And also, I'd love you to check out my podcast. Yeah. Subscribe, all of that. Make sure you get along to the Adelaide Podcast Festival and also pop your podcast cherry. So there's a couple of podcast fringe events and we'd love to see you there. Awesome. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Be The Drop. Don't forget to subscribe in order to ensure you never miss out on one of our weekly episodes. Be The Drop is produced by Narrative Marketing, where we believe that stories connect individuals and that powerful storytelling can positively impact the world. To unleash your storytelling superpower, visit narrativemarketing.com.au or check out our social links in the show notes. To contact me directly with any specific comments you have, you can email me via amelia at narrativemarketing.com.au. And don't forget that whilst a task or challenge may seem overwhelming, a waterfall begins with one drop 
And look what comes from that. 